Amazon is one of the most temperamental rivers in the world. When it's the rainy season, it overflows from its bed and makes immense plains and forests disappear. On its way, it swallows the land where men and women hang on against all odds, attempting to live in some of its most dangerous areas. We are in Brazil, in the state of Pará, in the northeast of the country. This is where the Tapajos River flows into the Amazon. In this meeting of giants are born three lakes full of fish, which gives life to these fishing communities. The 90 people of Igarape do Costa live on this strip of sand that exists only in the dry season between the Pacovel and Aramane lakes. At the onset of the rainy season, the two rivers spill their waters. The people are used to the annual floods. They have learned over time to live with nature's terrible hostility. Water slides over the houses built on stilts. The people are used to life over the water. Everyone deals with the current situation and goes about their daily routine. In this region, where the heat is overwhelming all year round, the rainy season is welcome. Everything that grows desperately needs water to live. That is why the residents have done everything to adapt to this aquatic life. Even animals which usually live on land have been adapted to this system. There are also the fish. Igarape is primarily a country of fishermen, and this time of year the fish are abundant. Each fisherman has a unique technique to catch different species. Everything is at stake here with the starting of the rainy season. But over the past few years, the Amazon has been rebelling. The climate has brutally changed under the helpless gaze of the people. The tropical seasons, rather irregular in the past, now arrive suddenly and without warning. The torrential rains run without penetrating the soil, and the level of water does not stop rising. And when the wind rises, it causes terrible storms. The consequence is terrible for the people. They endure incomprehensible turmoil. They feel powerless. Their ancestral way of life is threatened, and the balance of the entire region is in peril. Marlene Rigorosha is one of the rare people who lived through the last few storms without giving up her life in Igarape, even at the worst point. She is a witness to the disruption the region is going through today. Marlene is a medical assistant. The Brazilian state has hired her in place of a doctor in a territory cut off from the world. She knows all the residents well. Marlene is also very in tune with nature. Her passion is harvesting medicinal plants which she prescribes to her patients. It is unbelievable how things have changed from when I was 12 years old. But I love living here and I want to continue living in this community. The difference is that now, in the rainy season, the water level is much higher. Water takes everything that is in its way and we have absolutely no protection. In 2009, we had to put our plants on a higher level because the water came up to here. I even had to remove this wall so that the water could go through. The water was up to here. Water rose like this. Everything up to this height was destroyed by the Banzero.
When it rains like this, we fear the rising water. I'm scared of losing my plants. It would be a catastrophe. Well, I would do anything so that it would not happen. I would protect them as much as I could by putting them as high up as possible. The rain continues to fall and the water level continues to climb. With the wind, everyone fears the appearance of the extremely violent waves that they call the Banzeros. But Marlene is a fighter. She will hold on no matter what the cost. It is very hard to remain in this community during the flooding period. The Banzeros destroy everything that gets in its way. I'm scared that the water level is very high. It is at this moment when the waves are at its worst. We have no protection. It is very dangerous. We are sleep deprived. The boats and the house move so much. It is impossible to sleep. Even so, in 2009, we still stayed. In 2009, Igarape had the most violent flooding in its history breaking a record of more than eight meters. When the wind started to howl, it provoked an unprecedented storm. Many people at that point refused to live in Igarape and went to settle in Santa Rem, the nearest town. Olga, Marlene's daughter, is one of the people who was most affected by the storm of 2009. But like her mother, she is holding on. She has a meeting today with David McGrath, director of IPAM, the Amazon Environmental Research Institute. This private organization works to help the Amazonian people to adapt to the climatic changes. David wants to know how the people of Igarape dealt with the catastrophe of 2009 and if they are ready to confront the next flood. And this is the first time that you felt you were in danger. Yes, exactly. The flood of 2009 was the most violent flood that we had ever encountered. It was then that many people left the community and went to Santa Rem, where they bought their houses. Was your house damaged? Did anything change? Or is this house more or less the same? The house has stayed the same, except that it's tilted five centimeters to the front because of the waves and the violent wind that we had in 2009. It was at that moment that the house began to shake in all directions, to move from one side to another. Is it stable now? Yes, but at that time it was like that. And where did the water reach? Up to here. The water reached here. Look! And you have continued to live here during all that time. Oh no. When the water was at this level, we were already on the boat. But we left our things in the house. After that, when the water continued to rise, we eventually had to take them with us. And you put them in your boat? We did. But the problem was that there was an extremely violent rainfall when our things were still in the house. It was at that point that the house started to move in all directions. And when I saw that from our boat, it was really heartbreaking as we had just finished construction on the house earlier that year. How did we get here? How could the weather get so out of control? The Igarape villagers have asked these questions for years, and today they capture the interest of scientists who study the Amazon terrain. Among the scientists who regularly visit Marlene's community is Willy Barreto Macado from the Center of Research for the Biosphere and Atmosphere in the Amazon. He asks about the climatic changes felt today in the region. 
Here, in the community of Igarape do Costa, we have concluded that there is no balance between the seasons. There is no longer a border separating the rainy season from the dry season. Every year, the situation worsens a little bit more. So we have a shorter dry season due to La Nina, and that has a direct effect on the precipitation in the region. El Nino, at the beginning, takes the form of a trade wind that comes from the Pacific Ocean. It touches the continent around Peru and spreads around South America. In the northeast of Brazil, where we find Igarapé, El Nino tends to increase the temperature and decrease the amount of rain. But the phenomenon that is La Nina, that has also tormented South America for several years, does the exact opposite. In the northeast of Brazil, it increases the rainfall. It is this phenomena that is striking the community of Igarapé do Costa at this moment. We've noticed the climate change, which is felt all around the world, has strongly reinforced the effects of La Nina and El Nino. Instead of occurring every five to eight years, they now appear virtually every year. It is a problem that Marlene and her husband, Edelson, must face. The last rainstorm increased the water level. Marlene and Edelson want to see if the stilts in the floor of their house are solid enough in case the wind starts to howl. Come this way. Take a peek around the house. We will see if we will need to buy wood in anticipation of the rising water. From here it looks fine. Let's look under the house to see if there is a problem. Are you scared of the waves? Look here. Just there. It looks good to me. That's good. This way we don't have to go and buy wood. It's good to check, to look anyhow. I think we need to replace this beam and the four joists. They do not seem to be in good condition. Marlene wants to be assured that her medicinal plants are safe. The people of the community will need to rely on them in the days that follow whatever happens. You must really do something for my plants. I think we have to put them up higher again. We'll have to do a shelf for the ones that are low. Yes. It's the only way. You are right. It's the only way not to lose them. And God willing, the water will not go this high. The community's anxiety rises as the water levels creep higher and higher. Edelson would like Marlene to help him raise the pontoon access to their house, as it is now under the water level. No, Marlene, not like that. Be careful. It's going to break. Tie your boat there if you want. <laughs> Trying to raise a pontoon when there is a lack of resources requires saving everything down to the very last nail. Marlene often laughs to ward off fear. This laughter has allowed her, up until now, to live through the storms. <laughs> Making something new from something old is a local specialty. 
Marlene and her husband are very experienced at this. We'll put it more or less at the same level. Here, it's good. The height is fine. I don't trust this thing. Wait, let me catch my breath. One, two, three, go. It no longer moves now, except that this pontoon is too long. Is anyone there? David McGrath visits the people of Igarape. He arrives at Marlene's to see where she is in regards to the preparations. Hello, how are you? Making advanced preparations for the flood requires timing and precise planning. But spending too much too soon is also a mistake. Are you prepared in case the flood is worse than forecast, like in 2009? And have you planned to raise your floor? No, not in the immediate future. If the water rises, then we will quickly go to Santarem to buy wood. If we bought the wood ahead of time, we would not be able to preserve it in case of a flood. Do you understand? What will you do after that? After? Well, we'll have to go somewhere else while the water recedes. Initially, we'll wait on the boat to see how high the water will go. And if it continues to rise, we can go to Santarem, to one of my daughters. That is what we normally do. Do you normally move? Oh, yes. We know how to organize, and we all help each other out. The flooding may not be as violent as we expect. It will be fine. Don't worry. I think that it will be fine, too. We shall see. These few reassuring words from David quells the anxiety that everyone seems to share. The nice weather has decided to make an appearance in Igarape, but the water level continues to rise and rise and rise. The relentless rising of water is why the community settled here. Unfortunately, by developing the land, they have made the problem worse. Adam, who is trying to catch the rays and the pirarushu using traditional methods, knows the history of the region very well. I don't know if you are aware, but at a certain time, we deforested the region so that we could plant jute. The problem is that without any trees, the land disappears. I will give you an example. A tree like this one, it is security for the soil. It has roots that hold the earth. And if there weren't any trees, the earth would be smooth and the water would go away. For example, this tree, at this time of year, should have grown a lot more. But unfortunately, without soil, it cannot. The continuous increase in water levels in Igarape today is therefore a direct link to the deforestation that the region has known since the 1960s. Willy Barreto Macedo focuses his study on the phenomenon of the sedimentation in the Amazon River. Before, when it used to rain in the wooded area, the tree's roots, anchored deep in the ground, would allow the rainwater to penetrate and to recharge the ground. 
dos aquíferos, fazendo com que é, infiltrasse mais a água. But slowly, through deforestation, there's a waterproofing effect. This partial sealing of the ground prevents water infiltration and favors the transport of sediment towards the rivers and lakes. The continuous flooding drags along enormous quantities of sediments that end up obstructing the submerged land. As it accumulates, the land reduces the depth of water in the flooded areas. When the winter wind comes blowing on the vast stretches of shallow water, it produces waves and the banzeros that destroy houses and spreads terror. But the sedimentation has other serious consequences for the people of Igarape. It tends to make the fish disappear. Adam is having a hard time feeding his family. There were a lot of fish here. They were everywhere. They were in the weeds, and now they are gone. Now, where will the birds in the capivara go? That is the problem of floods. It strongly damages nature. All of a sudden, the vegetation disappears. In Igarape do Costa, like many of the communities attached to the Amazon River, it's the fishing that assures their survival. But life in Igarape rests on a fragile equilibrium. Economic and climatic conditions are intimately intertwined. When the weather is altered, their livelihood is threatened. Nelio, Marlene's son-in-law and Olga's husband, is a fisherman, like most men in the community. The problem is when we have a storm. The rain is really violent, and when that happens, it is very hard to fish. Actually, we never know what will happen. The unpredictable weather has resulted in making the people who live along the river very insecure. The fishermen come from far away to throw their fishing lines in Igarape. The three lakes still have the reputation of having some of the most coveted fish. I think that the quantity of fish declines every year because of global warming, but also because there are many more fishermen. Season after season, the number of fishermen increases. And fishing has increased a lot in this area. All of a sudden, it became very difficult for us. There are too many of us now that other fishermen have come from other areas. The fishermen of Igarape have a triple threat against them. The climatic conditions have become harder. There are many more fishermen, and there are less fish. All that combined makes the population of Igarape weak. Vivi, a close family friend of Marlene's, still fishes the traditional way. He feels that the competition is a direct consequence of the climatic change, which makes it harder to fish. In the past, it was easier, but today the whole world wants to fish. This activity spread with the motorboats. Now, nobody wants to use the rowboats. It's so much easier. The best way for survival here is the fishing, because every day we have money in our hands. When we work on the jute or cassavara, we would only get money in our hands every six months. The climatic changes of the last few years and the strong competition that exists in the fishing community of Igarape has forced some creative decision-making. There is one fish that exists that escapes being caught by the fishermen in the Amazon. This fish hunts in the depths of the river, inaccessible by the fishermen, feeds on carrion, and it's not considered very tasty. 
But in these difficult times, some people will eat it anyways. Marlene's son-in-law has an idea. He has asked Ronan and Demis to join him. Fishing together is not conventional, but in these hard times, this fish that they call piracatinha may be the solution. so many. Go slowly, Nelio. They're all at the bottom. They will come up soon. Look, they are really there. But there is too much light. We must wait a bit more. First, they come and stay on the riverbed. When we see the rope move, it means that they are there. Then we see them breathe. The bubbles break the surface. That means we will soon be able to fish. We do not need a boat, no gas, nor net, nor fishing rod, or anything else. With a pig's head and its organs, we can catch one or two tons of piracatinga. I must say, it's really funny to fish for piracatinga, the only fishing that is done by hand. The organs and the head of the pig are used as bait, as they have the same scent as the pitiyu, a turtle that they normally eat. We sell the piracatinga at the same price as the mapara, which is a highly sought fish. For that, it is best to remove the fillets and sell them outside of the area. Right now, where the fishing of Mapara is forbidden, we can sell the Piracatinga at a higher price. Usually, when we fish for the Piracatinga, we have a buyer at the port of Saint Tharem. He buys the fish from us in large quantities as there is a large demand for it. It is really cool this way of fishing. After this we put them on ice and the money arrives directly in our pocket. The trick is to fish for the piracatinha when it is prohibited from fishing the mapara. The price soars and they can be sold already filleted to a clientele from towns that will not notice the difference. Thus, the survival of the people of Igarape sometimes takes the form of thumbing noses at the affluent population of the large cities. The rain has started to fall again in Igarape. The anxiety that never leaves the people has now doubled. In preparation for the rising of water, Marlene takes advantage of the calm to shelter the stock of medication. She asks Edelniza, who works at the center, to help her. Thank you for coming and helping me. There is a lot to do. Take the most important things, only the things that are really necessary. We can take this one. I can take this for the injuries. Oh yes, you must. Also, take the band-aids. Put all this in a box. Okay, let's go. I will take it like this. Be careful, watch your step. Go slowly.
I will put the medicine in the boat now as the water could come really fast and I have to be able to work. I have to help all these people. <laughs> For example, in 2009, I helped people in the infirmary with water up to here. And when the banzeros come, everything can get soaked, the medicine and the supplies. Now that they have the medicine sheltered, they must move fast. And Marlene jumps in her canoe. She must visit her oldest patient who lives on the other side of the community. Like every day at the same time, she must give Galvino his injection. Hello, hello Galvino. It's me, Marlene. I'm here for the visit. Let's see if the pressure is good. If it's high, I will give you captopril. If it's normal, then I will give you your injection for the inflammation. There, it's done. Are you all right? Yes. The rising water causes new problems. Marlene and her husband Edelson make a harsh observation. The wild animals use the tree branches to glide closer to them. Edelson, you see that? We should cut the branch that I told you about. Marlene and Edelson decide to trim the tree that is next to their house. It's so much nicer when I cut it. You see, it's much nicer when the tree is cleared, when we have trimmed the branches. When it's cut, it's better. We can see the snakes and crocodiles or any other animals that come towards the house from far off. We can see, especially at night. And if we didn't cut it, they would come and eat our chickens. Cut this branch here. No, no, the first one, please. Because at night someone could hurt themselves on it. If someone comes at night, it could hit them in the eye. Be careful, you are going to fall in the water. There are bugs. The rain has started again. They may once again be displaced by the river. But for how long? Under the powerful rain, Marlene goes to Rosario's. Her friend has certain plants that could help. Marlene needs to plant them as soon as possible. I am glad I've come to see you. I was sure you would have interesting things for me. Be careful, you're going to get wet. Here, small cuttings. Oh, thank you, they're perfect. <laughs> Could you give that to me? Yes, of course. Perfect. This plant is really good for... Do you know what? No, what? The inflammation of the stomach and gastro. I was going to say that it would be good for headaches. Yes, for that too. For most of the people of Igarape, conventional medicine is not affordable. The herbs that Marlene cultivates at her home all year round allow her to offer alternative medicine. That God blesses you and gives you good health. And that we always have the strength to preserve our plants. Goodbye. Goodbye. The image of Marlene cultivating her plants 
underscores the importance of vegetation in Igarape. Today, there is a resurgence in planting trees and other flora. This profound change in priorities is the direct consequence of the recent climatic upheavals. The disruptions have made it unmistakably clear that vegetation has played a key role in the balance of the region. The Canarana is the first step of the reforestation that is beginning in Igarape. This herd, similar to bamboo, should help protect the community during the storms by reducing the impact of the waves. The Canarana has also the ability to reconstruct the habitats for fish. Edelson greets Marcio Puna dos Santos, who, as part of IPAM, proposed to help the people in replanting the fields of Canarana. I came here to get some Canarana cuttings. As you know, there is a piece of land where you can replant this with the school. If I understood correctly, you have in your field many adult Canarana plants. Do you have a problem with the current here? Yes, the current is extremely strong. Actually, when the storm comes, it triggers the waves. They are very high and very violent. But thank God, since we have planted the Canarana, things are a lot better. The waves are a lot less fierce. How many Canaranas can be planted on this land? Here, one. And there, another. And this one? This one? Pff, no, it is not good. Each clipping will become a plant, is that right? Yes, that's right. Each eye of this branch will become a Canarana plant. And this, this goes in the ground. And have you seen other changes with the Canarana? Because since we have planted it, it could be that an evolution has begun. Yes, I've noticed a few species of fish that we no longer use to see. Now we are seeing them again. Do you think it is also possible with rare species like the Pirahuchu? Maybe. They will return when there are enough small fish for them to eat. Edelson and Marcio brought the Canarana clippings they harvested to the school in Igarape. Olga, Marlene's daughter and a teacher in Igarape, conducts workshops on deforestation. During the flood of 2009, a large number of houses were destroyed, and so many people had to leave Agarape. They left the community and went to live elsewhere. We must replant Canarana in the community to ensure our protection. And we are here so that you can learn how to plant them yourself. And one day, it will be up to you to do it. Come on, children. We're going now. This reforestation movement has been very well received by the inhabitants of Igarape. Adults are able to easily find words to launch the younger generations into battle. That is the root, do you see? That is what you need to put in the ground, okay? You must plant the canarana like this, otherwise it won't grow. Edelson has had a lot of experience with the Canarana. He will show you how to plant them, and we will observe how he does it. You must have this distance between two plants, at least this distance, otherwise it will not grow well. Well, it's now your turn to try. Today, the trees have a role to play. 
The trees are now seen for what they are, formidable machines to stock and redistribute. They are capable of drawing water from deep down in the ground and to give it back during the dry season. They also offer a habitat for the fish and their roots hold the soil. It's as though the animal and human world is settled and developed surrounding the water and trees. Now that the important emergencies have been resolved, and that the rain is a little calmer, Marlene can concentrate on a project that is close to her heart. She wants to find some plants from her childhood. When the floods were less violent, the cassava grew abundantly in Igarape. It was used as a basic food staple. Marlene goes to Agua Preta, which is located away from the great floods. She wants to collect certain plants of cassava to try to transplant during the summer at her place in Igarape. You know, Valdine, this place reminds me of my childhood and adolescence. Where I live in my community, we would make flour out of cassava, just like you are doing now. This is why I would love to go into your plantation, if it is all right with you, to collect a few cuttings of your cassava plants. I want to try and plant it when the season allows me to. I like this one. It seems perfect to me. I'll cut it. And here is one more. This one, this one here. This one we have to keep. We have to keep them far away from water to keep it dry. In Igarape, like in other areas in the Amazon, the process of reforestation has taken on a life of its own. It has taken Marlene by storm, and the majority of the people now realize that the vegetation has a role in the balance of the region. David McGrath from IPAM supports the process of reforestation. He goes to meet Walke, a fisherman who wants to replant his fruit trees. And this project is to replant the fruit trees that you use for your fishing. I remember that my mother always used to say to me, when you go fishing, if you throw your line under a socorro tree, you will have a good chance to catch the largest fish. But there are no more trees? I think the number of fish in the future will continue to decline because the number of fishermen continues to increase, because there are less trees and less grass. That is why I really like your idea of protecting your fruit trees surrounding your house. During the time of year where we find this fish, we've decided to only allow the fishing rod and ban the fishing net. Oh, okay, only the fishing rod. Yes, like I mentioned, only the fishing rod under the fruit trees. Like the katawari. Yes, like the katawari or the socorro. The project is to replant these trees as well as the kanarana, right? Yes, but these trees demand a lot of attention. Since we lack dry land and we need to find a way to protect them against the floods. 
You must really work with the community. According to David McGrath and the private organizations that work with the reforestation movement, the people of Igarape have a proprietary right to use and protect their natural environment. A set of Brazilian laws from 2006 recognizes that the people who live in the Amazon have the right to establish laws to preserve any natural resource, and it gives them the right to impose the laws onto others. During this time of year, the people of Igarape fish under these fruit trees as they attract a sought-after fish, the tambaki. But since the time of deforestation, the species is threatened. The community has decided that only line fishing should be allowed in the area. Alas, the people from the other communities do not respect these laws. They come and throw their nets under the fruit trees. For Marlene and the people of Igarape, who got together today at the community meeting, they must decide how to impose the rules on their neighboring communities. For each of them, it is an occasion to make a collective decision. We are here to put things right. It is forbidden to fish with a net under the trees. Now everyone knows it. We are going to announce it on the radio, and if any one of us find a fishing net under the tree, we have the right to remove it. And who do I give the fishing net to? Someone in the community. You say that. But the nets that I have taken and given to you, you have given them back. All of a sudden, I'm the bad guy? I was treated as a thief. I'm going to tell you something. If I take a net with Esmeralda and Marlene, and we bring them here, and we do not get your support, the people will be furious at us, really angry. We really do not get the support of the majority of the community. The three of us will need your help. That is what should be done. If you announce on the radio that net fishing is prohibited here, someone can come put a snake in front of my door and say, you cannot forbid me to do that. Do you know when the community of Tapara will hold their next meeting? <coughs> hmm, in three weeks, I think. I suggest that we go to their meeting. We bring with us our rules and we discuss it with them as I think that the problem lies with them. They have the tendency to invade us. Anyhow, that's my opinion. The weather is now beautiful and the menace of the storm has dissipated for the moment. But for how long? The village must remain careful. If the wind rises on the river, the waves will cut the community off from the rest of the world. Josie Clea is pregnant. Marlene, who is visiting her, realizes that the nearest hospital may not be accessible on a daily basis. Could I look at your pregnancy journal? I'd like to see whereabouts you are. Everything looks fine, but only for the near future. I will write you a letter for the hospital. You really must have the baby at the Santarem Hospital, as we never know what can happen. Despite all the advice that Marlene has given her, the young lady from Igarape did not have enough time to go to the maternity ward. It's a boy. He's beautiful. It is my 108th delivery in this community. I know that I will remain in Igarape with my husband. 
We will put all our belongings in the boat if we have to, but we will remain here no matter what the cost. Our life is here, in Igarape, and nowhere else. I really do not know how the rainy season will be for us, but what I do know is that Edison and I are staying. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.